eyes work better looking perpendicular to something. Think about a book, right? Like, you know, your worst putt's better than your worst chip. One thing that I would do when I caddy for my players, you know, whether that's at the US Open with T-Vic or any, anywhere else, you're checking wind direction before the day. Basic right there, look at this. Oh, on cue, come on. Hole 17 at the Heights Country Club. Yep. Yep, and it's a good par five, you know. It's just, this guy is taking on quite a little bit, he's taking on a little bit of a risk here hitting driver, because if he hits it straight, this thing is gone. You know, gone. <laughs> but he needs to hit a cut around the corner and uh, kind of has to go between work that like bare tree and then the one just to the right of it. Okay, sounds good. Anywhere left of there is very dangerous. So yeah, it runs out at like 250 and that's you know easy for him to run it out. So he's got to hit a cut off the left side. If it cuts, it's going to be money and he'll have an iron in. Mm. There it is. That is just absolutely crushed right there. Yeah, that should be good. <laughs> I mean, you can kind of look back and see the trees that William had to shape it around here. This is the, looking back at the tee at the 17th hole. So, you know, the tee box is way back where the big palm tree is back there left of the mountain. Um, and you got to hit a big cut over just to be where he is here. And he's still on the left side of the fairway. Um, now, the risk definitely paid off here as he hit a 310-yard cut dead into the wind. So that's pretty impressive. Um, yeah, 505 into the hole. He's got 190 in. Um, so technically, it was 315 into the wind. Um, which without that win, because you can feel it's pretty pretty stiff up here, right, Kev? I mean, that's at least probably 20 off that golf shot he just hit right there. Uh, what do we have here, buddy? 190? Soft six. Well, hold on a second here. Go, run me through it, though. Let's run our viewer through so, it. It's 190. Is that the actual number? or what No, we... it's 195 unadjusted. Unadjusted. It's 190 adjusted. Okay, so downhill five. Um, we have into the wind. Into the wind, so it's probably playing like 200. I'm playing, a, I'm playing a low six. And I'm really aiming at the right side of the green. Yeah, so when you look at the green up there, guys, the rock wall short, obviously Maybe water the... for short and all around the left. Um, you know, we're looking at something. Kind of where uh, the rocks stop and it goes more like concrete between yeah. there and the right edge of the green. Yeah, absolutely. So what kind of shot? You're just getting that low shot we worked on with the yeah. upper body hitting it? Yeah. And then even if it doesn't draw, worst case, I've got a short chip, which with lots of green to work with. And then if I hit it straight, then I'm on the green with two putts for birdie. So. All right, let's see it. Go. Got to go. Oh, man. I, gosh, no problem. Man, just, just overturned it just a hair. But that's why he aimed where he did. He aimed right center, overturned it only, only 12 feet left of the hole. And it's almost pin high, just right up there. Pretty incredible shot, you guys. You can see why we'd want to aim to the front right here. So he was aimed to the right quadrant of the green. Hit a little draw, wind got on the side of it, so it turned about five, six yards. I mean, look where he is. He's practically putting. We brought both clubs to see what we're doing here, but he could putt this easily from 17 feet, right? This is makeable for Eagle. Um, great shot, got it up to pin high, so it's really nice to see him carry that six iron all the way back there. A lot of that has to do with the fact he got his upper body much more on top of it, started that ball very low and didn't put it up into the wind, so that's, that's really nice to see. You know, come, come on back here, guys. I mean, I would actually tell most people to putt this because your worst chip is always, you know, your worst putt's better than your worst chip. <laughs> now, for him, I actually think this is more makeable. He's a good chipper, so this is more makeable as a chip. It's real furry in there, like he said, a little bit of stuff right here. He can just toss this ball off the back of his stance right here. Easy, easy, easy little bump and run. Now, most people don't think like that, I know, and then you need to come see us for a lesson or check up some of our short game tutorials, right, which we're gonna get out soon. But this, is, uh, this should be a very basic, easy chip right here for our man here. Basic right there, look at this. Oh, on cue, come on. This guy makes eagle on his first ball, first hole in the course session. That's ridiculous, dude. That a boy. Way to go. Talked about how that's more makeable for a better golfer because you're taking away the variables of all the bounces that that possibly could have. A lot would have to go right for that ball to, uh, to go in with a putt. You could hit a great putt and not have that go in. I mean, shoot, on a green, I teach my, boy, my guys, from 10 feet, you could hit that putt. And on a good green, there's still imperfections that can make that ball go out let alone all the stuff he had to putt over right there. So, you know, for, for the majority of golfers, I'd say, hey, putt that because even a bad putt would be inside five feet but not for, on the first one. For my better players, chip, chipping that all day. The 18th hole, really good finishing hole. Um, you know, for the longer hitters, a lot easier because they can get up that slope up there. But, you know, for a lot of people, they can't hit it past the 250 mark, and that really makes it tough to get a, 
to get their drive all the way up the slope. Really uphill landing area, so a lot of people get a lot of yardage here. All right, buddy, so hey, listen, I, I like you. The, you know, the wind's kind of always at our, at our back and kind of, yeah, it's just coming out of, the, out of our back, right? Yeah. Typically, it comes out of the left here and pushes the ball to the right, but I think this is actually a little, a little bit more straight yeah. down today, don't you think? Yeah, I think so. Okay, so where do you want to start this golf ball? Kind of see the, I mean, there's the gap in the trees back there. Yes. Which is like basically the line of the edge of the fairway. I like that. Kind of like just off tree. there. If it stays straight, then I'm usually fine because I can carry those trees. And I like it. Even but if it goes left, it bounces right. And exactly. if it's right, you have more room. I, well, the fairway goes so wide up there at I the like right. I like edge of the bunkers out it. there and just hit that nice, just turn around the corner. Hmm. That'll work. I mean, it's a little push, but. Yeah, the wind got it a little more than we wanted it, you know? Yeah. And, and, and once again, it's not, not a bad spot, but let's go play it from there. Let's go see what we have. He got a pretty it hard should, bounce. It was, you know, he picked a good shot. He made a good swing. One thing that I would do when I caddy for my players, you know, whether that's at the U.S. Open with T-Vic or any, anywhere else, you're checking wind direction before the day. We even mark down in the book when it switches. So I have, you know, from 11 a.m. 11 to, to 1 p.m., it's, you know, coming out of the east, okay? Then at 12 p.m., it turns to, you know, this or whatever. And that's really good to keep note of because, you know, if you, the wind swirls a lot on a golf course. And sometimes when you're standing there, you don't just get that accurate feedback by throwing grass up in the air or by looking up at the trees. It's changing. The feeling's changing, but the general direction I've learned typically is the same. And when you get a wind direction based upon what's been told by, yeah. uh, you know, the forecast, it, it typically right. is what it is. You know, you stick to that. And, you know, if you're wondering, God, is this downwind? Is this into the wind? It's kind of flipping. You stick with whatever the book says, right? Yeah. He's left with a really open shot here and actually has a great angle to a back left pin. So let's get a number on that, buddy. I've got 128 to the pin. To the pin, and what's the top edge of the bunker? That's unadjusted. Top edge of the bunker is 112, yeah. So, you know, Kev, can you zoom in up there for people to see that real quick? So we like to have our players always get the pin and the front edge of the green. Today, today without a pin sheet, we're just going to say, hey, let's get the top edge of the bunker in front of us. So we know that anything, you know, it's 112 to that top edge. Anything 115 or beyond covers the bunker at least. But what do we have into the hole? 128? 128 unadjusted. It's playing 133. I, I wouldn't play it at uh, one yard past the number because you just don't want to be past that pin. And with this um, wind as well, it's kind of... Yeah, I mean, the wind's it. almost helping a little bit, if anything. Yeah. I think, I just think you hit a... It, you know, can you hit, give me like in between about 122, 23 yards here? Yeah, I can hit that. Yeah, and then just leave it underneath the hole? I typically play this a little bit. I'd hit more dino and it's got a little bit more spin because typically you don't get much out of this. Yeah, and, and be careful, you know, with that wind and this grass, it's easy to it'll have go. a jumper, right? Oh, yeah, it'll so go. So that's why I'm big on you playing closer to that 120 to 122 yardage, okay? Gorgeous golf swing. I'll be the right club. That's should be pretty good i mean it was <laughs> listen i mean it looked good it's it's a tough shot to judge you guys because you know you have wind and you have what we thought would be a fly or lie now what dictates it being a fly or lie well it wasn't sitting down with enough grass behind it to where it would slow down the club mm -hmm. face and muffle the shot yeah. it was just enough to where it would get in between the grooves mm -hmm. not slow down the club yeah. but take off the spin, spin and that's a fly or lie yeah. okay Got to read that lie to be a great golfer. I'm hoping that didn't go a little past. That's a, oh, oh Bo, let's go. Okay, I don't care. Got to make this. But guys, great lesson. So check us out. We knew it was 112 to carry the front. So we needed something at least 115. So it was 128 hole, but why not pick 120, 122? That gave him the opportunity to, if the flyer did happen, and it knuckled that extra five, six yards, there it is, still right by the pen and not over in the back bunker. So really good course management on his part there, and a beautiful shot to the green. And Kevin, we're sitting here through two holes, and this guy has a chance to go three under. <laughs> we might have to finish this round out. This is ridiculous. We just drove back to start on 17 to get a couple holes in, because that was the only open spot in the golf course. We might have to weasel our way into hole one and go play one through 16. We're still, we're always pin out, guys. You know, pin in outside 25 feet, great for depth perception, to be able to see the line, whatever, great. I hope, my, I hope that people are dying it in from that far anyways, so. You know, that would, wouldn't affect the make percentage at all. From this distance right here, I don't trust the pin at all. Just don't no. trust it. Anything talking about I keeping the pin in helping? I have zero confidence with the pin at less than no. even 15 feet. 
there's not a chance. This makes the hole there. smaller. <laughs> yeah, literally. I mean, over the ball, I typically stand over it just to get a feel so that I don't like doubt myself over it. Um, then I read it and see if kind of what I felt is the same. Then after that, I'll take, I'll, I always read it from the low side. You can really get a better idea for the slope, I think. So um, we, went to, we went to the low side of the hole because we typically read better looking up, right? Yeah. Rather than, you know, what our players will do is they'll do a good job of standing over it initially. They'll mark the ball. They'll get a feel. I already feel like it's almost like right edge-ish, yeah. right? I'll come back here and just look back up the hill. The eyes work better looking perpendicular to something. Think about a book, right? Like this way, the words blur together, but here eyes work better. Same thing with slopes, you know, I can really see that ball running down the slope now. Now, William, at the pace you're going to hit that, what do you like? Just outside? Well, I'm probably not going to hit this that hard. No, exactly, it's downhill. It's, downhill. it's downhill, it's turning right to left. So I'm probably... Not a whole heck of a lot, though. No. I'm maybe seeing this inside right. I think it's just right on the top of the edge, dude. I think if you put it just on the top of the edge, there's no way it could finish low. But at the same time, if, it's, if you kept it there, it wouldn't, it wouldn't stay up too high. I mean, it's going to turn at least a bit. So. It's going to turn at least two inches, dude. So just, get your feel, just get your feel, get in it, get in there, see it. I have to start online with a good pace, and then that's it. That's all I can really do. Beautiful. Well, you know, three under through two. <laughs> Made us, made us look good at what we're doing out here. Like we, like we actually kind of know what we're doing. Nice job, buddy. Thanks. Proud of you. That's what we would be doing on a typical prep yourself for a tournament week, you know, practice session. I mean, it would be, you know, let's go and check out of the range real quick. Make sure we got some good feels. Make sure we're just looking good and know that with our setup. Simple checkpoints, ball position, you know, alignment, all that stuff. We check that. Now from there, let's make sure we have a good feel. Yep. Our one thought, he's young, he needs, to ha he needs his, his go-to thought right now to work himself, it continued in the right direction. We, we, we fig figured out what that was. Then, you know what, get on the golf course and practice on the course. That's what the key is. And I know not everybody has the luxury of being able to do that, but find the time to do that. And don't be afraid to pay for a round of golf in an evening and take advantage of using it as practicing on the golf course as opposed to just feeling like you always have to go out and shoot a score. But I think the big thing is to be able to hit golf shots on the golf course, to practice those feelings. You know, seeing Will do that today. Now the score just was a massive bonus, but having him hit as many good quality shots as he hit today, um, and then shoot three under through two holes, obviously. It was, that, that, that gives you real confidence. That's real confidence because not only did we see good shots on the driving range, we came out here and it translated. Okay, yeah. so fantastic job, buddy. Thanks. Awesome.